Hello, my name is Perry Frank. I am the Instructional Services and Equipment Specialist here at JCC. I would like to thank you for attending this virtual workshop titled Classroom on Wheels, also known as Cow. We have about nine cows that are moving and roaming around here on campus, and we have one cow that is located at the WDC, the Workforce Development Center, totaling 10 cows. So we are excited that we have these cows around about our campus and off campus uh, for you, our faculty. And I would like to say welcome back. Uh, welcome back for this another exciting semester uh, and also to this yet another annual faculty staff conference. This conference is titled A Homecoming Celebration for JCC. And in this workshop, we will cover uh, basically how to utilize this classroom on wheels, how to make this device uh, integrated into your um, instructional pedagogy of teaching. Uh, this device will assist you to facilitate or to promote active learning, engagement, and interaction with your students. You may reserve one of the classroom on wheels by communicating with the AVP or the department chair in, the, in one of the cow located buildings. Once you have reserved to use the cow, first step you will need to power up or turn on the cow. And before we do that, I want to turn this cow around to let, to let you see the back of the classroom wheels. All right, so in the back you have the power cord. So this is behind the classroom wheels, so we want to go ahead and power up the classroom wheels. So in the back we have a power cord. So we're going to plug this up into the power outlet to start the process of powering up the classroom wheels. Now you're ready to start the process of powering up the classroom wheels. First, let's open up this um, cabinet area here. And this device here, this is the processor that powers up, start the process of powering up the classroom wheels. Uh, you want to just uh, flip open this compartment here, and then press the power, press the power button. You will hear, you hear a beep, and the power button will illuminate to blue, and you see the lights illuminated here. That lets you know that it's starting the process of powering up the classroom wheels. And also you notice the touch panel is also initiating the process of the user interface. And it is now, the touch panel has now booted up to the interface screen. This device is the touch panel or the remote control that can control every component on this classroom on wheels. So now we want to press the start button to boot up the classroom on wheels video display monitor. So press start. And it says please wait while the system is starting up. And you notice now that it's displaying um, a video source for the New Line PC and also for a laptop.
And you do have an option to bring in an external device like a laptop. Uh, and once you attach the laptop to the HDMI cable, and we're going to go over that a little later, you will simply press the laptop button. But since we're going to use the CAL system as far as the New Line PC or the PC on board this CAL, let's just simply press New Line PC. And now the desktop is booted up to the Windows interface. And with this video display monitor, it is um, a touchscreen capability. Um, simply tap or scroll up to go to the login screen here or in the back of the classroom over there. On my right side of your left. And also on the other side, we have two stylus interactive pins that you can also use as well. So we're going to just tap and this is logging to our user account. You can also incorporate an external device into the classroom wheels, like, an, like a laptop. Simply just take the HDMI cable and just plug it into your laptop. You can also incorporate an external device into the classroom wheels, like a laptop. You simply just take the HDMI cable and just plug it into your laptop. And you read a little bit audio sound as a ding or ring sound and that was the sound that it was plug and play it said it initiated the laptop into the system and if I zoom out you will now see the image of the laptop on the classroom on wheels if you do not want your laptop image to display on the classroom on wheels video display monitor under select the source just press new line pc and you now will have the new line desktop showing on the display monitor instead of your laptop image with the classroom on wheels, you also have an option on your external device to utilize the classroom on wheels camera into your video display on your laptop. Insert the USB cable for the camera. And I'm now in a collaborative session. So I want to use the 
classroom will use camera in my collaborative session on my laptop. And I'm going to select the set up your camera and microphone. And now I have to search for the classroom wheels camera by clicking the drop down arrow. And I only see one video source, my integrated camera. I have to toggle through the USB toggle feature for cameras to initiate my camera for the classroom wheels. To the right of the select the source area, you have your volume control where you can turn the volume up on your classroom wheels by pressing the up arrow. And you can turn your volume down by pressing the down arrow. And also, you can mute your speaker audio. And then unmute it. And on the display control, you can simply turn off your, dis your main display monitor from on to off. After you have finished utilizing the classroom wheels, you want to properly shut down the device. First, you want to sign out of your user account. You want to shut down the Windows login area. is now starting the process of uh, shutting down and it goes back to default um, which is the, the Android side of the house. So now we're ready to power off the classroom wheels. On the touch panel, press the power button here to power off. And it says, do you want to power down the... And you press power down. And it says, please wait while the system is powering down. And you notice now the system starts back up to the startup screen. That will let you know that the system is powered down. And if we zoom out, and also if the display monitor is uh, has a blank or black screen, that also lets you know that the system is completely shut down. And if you're finished with using the classroom wheels uh, throughout the week or um, you want to unplug the power from the power outlet of the classroom wheels, uh, you will first have to properly power off the main processor.
by pressing the power button. Now just close the compartment back. And now you may unplug the power cord from the outlet. One of the tips and tricks with the classroom wheels is the auto tracking camera feature. Here you see I have the remote to the um, camera and you notice uh, with the remote you have the up arrow to uh, tip the camera up. Also the other controls you see you have the Get to the focus here. You have the down arrow, also the left arrow, the right arrow to pan to the right, pan to the left. Also, you have the zoom uh, in and zoom out slowly, and also zoom in and zoom out uh, with a faster pace. And those are all manual controls. And below here on the auto tracking, um, you can have auto tracking feature turned on for your camera. If you're an instructor that likes to move around the classroom, engaging your students, walking freely, um, communicate with your hands, then the auto tracking is the feature for you. So we're going to demonstrate how the auto tracking works with the classroom wheels. And also, when you have finished using auto tracking, you can simply turn it off and then the camera will be a fixed camera and you can um, control the camera yourself manually using these control features here. One of the best practices to enhance the student to instructor engagement is the utilization of Blackboard Collaborate. Blackboard Collaborate is a virtual classroom tool designed for education. It's similar to Zoom, Google Meet, and also other video conference applications as well um, to engage your students in a virtual environment. So right now we're, we're looking at um, our Blackboard course shell. And with every course at JCC, Collaborate is integrated within your Blackboard course shell. So I'm going to, to the left of the page, I'm going to click on the course tool link called collaboration and I'm going to scroll down to the Jolt Help Desk Collaborate room. This is one of the rooms we're using for this training session. And then we're going to click on the course room. Uh, the course room is the main room that we're going to use. You can also throughout the semester, uh, if you're going to do some synchronous online teaching uh, within this room. You can create sessions throughout, you can create sessions uh, for every course uh, you would teach throughout the semester. But for now, we're going to go into the main course room. And we're going to join the course room. And we're now logged into the collaborate space. And right now, uh, we do have a uh, participant in the collaborate session. Um, That's Ms. Rachel Council, and she's online with us right now. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to unmute my mic. And Rachel, can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. So we're now in this collaborate space. And we have Rachel Council here with us for this demonstration. How are you doing, Rachel? I'm oh, fine, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. So I do have my mic muted and collaborate, and I'm going to now um, display some video because right now, uh, if you notice, uh, my video icon has the line going through. That means there's no video being shared. So I'm just click the button, and it's going to ask me, uh, it's going to give me a video preview, and there I am right here. <laughs> And I'm going to now click the share video button. 
And Rachel should now be seeing me uh, live I do. The video. Awesome. All right, so uh, this is one of the best practices when using the live studio. Uh, it's uh, you, the utilization of Blackboard Collaborate when you are using Blackboard. Uh, this is one of the ways that you can engage your students far as student to instructor engagement. And Collaborate is the way to do that. So right now, I'm going to share some content with Rachel. And let me put that tab. And to the bottom right, you see there is a purple icon with two arrows pointing to the left. That is your open Collaborate panel button. I'm going to select that button. It's going to expand out. Uh, to the bottom right, you have some interactive buttons to the bottom right. Here you have your chat button for messaging. Also, this here is your attendees button. You can press that button and you can see how many participants or attendees are in the collaborative space. Right now, there's just two, Rachel and myself, uh, but I'm going to navigate over to the button to the right. That is the share content button. I'm going to select that button and it's going to give me some options of content to share. You have primary content. Um, the option that I want to use today for this workshop, I want to go to share application screen. So I'm going to click that button there and I'm going to do entire screen for today. And for I have multiple uh, video display monitors and the one that I want to select is screen two. So I'm going to select screen two and then click share. So Rachel, are you seeing my content right now? I am. I see a uh, Google Chrome. Awesome. All right, and and that's one way you can share content with your students by sharing your screen. Another way you can engage your students, and I'm going to just stop sharing my desktop. Another way you can engage your students in this collaborative space is by utilizing the interactive whiteboard. And I'm still on the shared content, and I'm going to I'm going to select share blank whiteboard. It's going to now open up my whiteboard space, and um, Rachel does have access also to engage in this interactive space as well as your students. If you give them um, access to share by default, your students will be under the. For instance, if I go back to participants. And right now, Rachel is a moderator. So as an instructor, you do have control access to change your students' roles. So for instance, if I go to attendees contr attendee controls, and right now, um, you know, Rachel is a moderator. But it's, if Rachel was a student in this course, she would have a participant role, which is default setting for collaborative meaning to participants and only view content and also listen to the instructor, don't have rights or access to uh, engage into annotation in the space far as the whiteboard. So you have to change that role from a participant to a presenter. Then the student will have access to engage in the writing space on the whiteboard. So right now, what I'm going to do, we're going to do some annotation here. So grab my pencil and I'm just going to start writing here. And I'm using the mouse and you don't have much control uh, to write legibly, uh, write in a legible uh, fashion, but that's the best I can do right now. So Rachel, uh, if you want to grab uh, something to uh, engage us, uh, you can do so also just to demonstrate the annotation of the whiteboard. Sure. And you see Rachel just typed in hi there. Mm -hmm. So as far as engaging mm -hmm. students in the collaborative space, you can engage them by sharing content. And also you can engage your students by utilizing the interactive whiteboard. And Rachel, thank you once again for joining this collaborative session. No problem. Have I a hope, great day. I hope you have a great day. <laughs>
far as engagements for students to instruct their engagements, uh, you have, if I click on the open collaborative panel, then go back to share content, uh, you have the secondary content, uh, you have the polling feature. Polling is a way you can engage your students or assess your class as far as um, what they're obtaining in your um, learning environment. So as far as polling, I'm going to click polling, and I just do a simple yes, no choices. And I'm just going to say, do you like Blackboard Collaborate? Yes or no? And I'm just going to click Start to share the content. And there's the polling right there that's popped up. And, okay. and then we got a response. We got a yes <laughs> from Ms. Rachel. Oh, so we got another yes from Mighty Mouse. And then I'll say yes as well. And also, you can show your responses by clicking on this link. And it shows the responses to your polling. And then if you want to stop the polling, you can also um, hide responses as well. And you can also clear out the polling also. And if you want to just stop sharing, you click the stop, you click the end poll button. And that ends the poll. Another secondary content is breakout groups. Uh, breakout groups is a way that your students can have student to student engagement in a small breakout session. Or you can do uh, also you can jump into each breakout group and do like a uh, instructor to student form of engagement also. So far as the breakout groups, you want to click this tab here and you know we want to start a breakout group. You can allow attendees to switch groups if you would choose to do so. So the main room here, uh, we have Mighty Miles, myself and Rachel. And for instance, if you want to pull in a group one, you can create Group. You have your members here. So let's see. For instance, we want Mighty Mouse in Group One. Put Mighty Mouse in Group One. And for Rachel, um, you will put her in Group One with Mighty Mouse. And then I will also, if I want to join that group, I can join it as well. And I can dive in. So we're going to go ahead and start. So now in group one, um, Rachel and Mighty Mouse should be in that group one. And as an instructor, you can also dive into the various groups also. So there's group one. And if I want to join group one, I can jump on in group one by clicking this button. And I should now be moving into group one. And I'm now in group one for the breakout session. So those are some other ways that you can engage your students as far as polling and in a breakout group. So now I don't want to turn on the auto tracking by pressing the home button. And you notice now I have a camera um, because my, my motion in my body and it's fixed on me. So if I start to walk around the room, I'm going to walk around and you notice the camera is following me. And I'm just going to close this out. So the camera is now following me. If I continue to walk to this side of the room, I'm talking. The camera is still following me because I turned on the auto tracking feature and the camera is fixed and locked in on me. So I'm going to continue to walk around the room and the camera is still following me. That's the cool thing about auto tracking is if you like to walk around your classroom and engage your students, talk with your hands, then this feature would definitely work for you to promote that active learning and engagement along with interaction with your students. And I'm walking to the back of the room now and it, the camera is still following me. Um, it has a 360 degree rotation, so it would definitely follow you around the room. 
and I'm at the farthest back of the room that I can go, and you see the camera is still following me. So if you have a case where you're co-teaching, um, you have two instructors that are co-teaching, uh, this the switch button that I showed you earlier, if you are in the, uh, the focal point or the, the line of view of the camera with two people, you simply press the switch button and the camera will scan the room and pick up the next person in the point of view to lock in on them to have them to be the person that's going to be followed.